Hope you and yours are well. Um, Linda, you are in Tzfat, in the north of Israel. It's one of my favorite spots in the whole world. Um, a spot where what we now know as Kabbalat Shabbat, the service that begins Shabbat, was created by mystics, which is another way of saying people with imaginations and hearts, who yearned for God so much that they would wear white and they would stand on the hills of Tzfat, overlooking Mount Meron, and they would greet the Shabbat bride as a queen. Our world is in a moment uh, of loss, and as complicated and strange as a monarchy is, especially in modern democratic terms, um, Queen Elizabeth of blessed memory was someone who lived a very long life and had a very long reign and was a symbol of stability if nothing else. Yes, complications when it comes to the British Empire and colonialism abound. But she was a human being, and she lived a very long life, presided over chaos, and presided as queen over a nation and a world, in fact, um, during times of enormous distress. And so, may her memory be a blessing. And because we don't believe, actually, that kings or queens are greater than any human being, she is a person just like Natalie's first cousin, Norman. Uh, who's a doctor who uh, she is remembering today. Um, his birthday would have been today. May his memory be for a blessing. Um, I also wanted to point to um, uh, the fact that this Sunday will be uh, the 21st anniversary of September 11th. We won't be um, having a session uh, broadcast on Sunday morning, and so I wanted to invoke that day and its memory today. Many of us carry very, very specific memories, some trauma and some deep personal loss. Um, I do. And so I wanted to make mention of September 11th today, not to bring us into that mood early or extend the, the tragedy in our hearts more than the day on which we commemorate it, but since we won't see each other that day important to say so right now. Let me also point to this Parsha, Ki Tetze. So Ki Tetze includes so much. We've spoken about many different facets of the Parsha this week. Here's one. In these verses is the command to remember what Amalek did to us. The phrase is, Zachor Tasher Asalecha Amalek, remember what Amalek did to you. Timche et Zecher Amalek, erase the memory of Amalek, which is complicated, remember and erase the memory. Al Tishkach, don't forget. There's a command to remember and to not forget. And this is hard to do both. Remember and do not forget. It's important, it's important to remember. And it's important to allow some of that memory not to fade, but to occupy a place in our brain that isn't right in the front of it. The problem with trauma and the challenge of trauma, as understood by um, neurologists and psychologists, is that trauma actually resides right here in our brain, so that when it is triggered, it's actually not receded into the long-term memory, to the hard drive, as it were, of our brains. Trauma triggers. And so when we look at things that are traumatic, we remember them immediately. So the Torah's compassion in saying, remember it but allow it not to be remembered first in every moment. That's important guidance. In preparation for, for the broadcast today, I reviewed some teachings by Rabbi Jonathan Sachs of Blessed Memory, who would have had something very, very important and eloquent and thoughtful and beautiful to say about uh, Queen Elizabeth's death. The absence of his comment on the loss of the queen uh, is felt around the world. I won't be able to capture anything that he would have said, but let me teach some Torah in his name. He pointed to the command to never ever forgive Amalek, to remember and not forget what Amalek did for us. And then he compared it very, very thoughtfully to the texts of, um, in the Torah of not despising. There's a command not to despise Egypt. And Rabbi Sachs makes this very obvious comparison that wouldn't have occurred to me until he did so. 
why are we commanded to not despise Egypt? In fact, Egypt enslaved us for 400 years. And we are commanded to never forget what Amalek did to us. Amalek attacked us once. Why are we commanded, if it's not hate, then to remember and never forget what Amalek did for us? And to not despise Egypt. And Rabbi Sachs made what I thought to be a very radical suggestion. He said, there are different kinds of hatred, similar to different kinds of love. In Pirkei Avot, it says um, to uh, it says that there is a kind of love that is dependent upon something. Ahava shetluya badavar. Love that is conditioned upon something. When the condition passes, so too will the love. We call that infatuation. We call that all sorts of things. That's not a love that is sustainable, that will last. Ava she'inat luya badavar. Sofa lehit kayem. Love that is not dependent upon anything will last. Rabbi Sachs used the opposite of that too. Hatred that is rational won't last. Hatred that is irrational will. Amalek attacking us, we had nothing to do with Amalek. It was an irrational hatred. He made a comparison to anti-Semitism. We could talk about the irrational hatred that people feel about people or ideas Irrational hatred will not go. We must be vigilant and remember it, face it, challenge it, defeat it. But there's also a rational hatred, and Rabbi Sachs uses the phrase rational hatred to talk about Egypt. He said just because it's rational doesn't mean it's justified. He's not excusing Egypt's hatred and treatment of the Israelites, our ancestors, of course not. But if you look at the Torah itself, it explains why the Egyptians hated the Israelites. Not that the Israelites did anything to deserve it, not that anyone does anything to deserve hatred, but Pharaoh and the Egyptians at the beginning of Exodus say, there are too many of them. They are strong. They will rise up against us. Let us be clever and deal with them. And so Rabbi Sachs makes what I consider to be a crucial observation about that text, which we could apply in our own day. Hatred that is explained might not be justified, but can little by little fade, that hatred can fade, just as love that isn't rooted in a sustainable commitment can fade. That's not really love, an irrational love, an unconditional love. That's love. Hatred, like Amalek's, is irrational. There is nothing to do except defeat it. It is the enemy. But rational hatred, meaning fear, little by little, can go away. And Rabbi Sachs used the example of waves of immigration to the United States, in fact. Jews, Polish people, Russian people, Irish people. He used the example of little by little waves of immigration that were met with hatred, absolutely. Jewish immigrants, refugees, were absolutely treated with hatred. But little by little, that can change as we acculturate, as we assimilate. There are, of course, strains that will not accept us no matter who we are and what we do. I can speak from the experience of Jewish history, and I'm sure that Irish people can speak about their experience, Catholic people can speak about their experience, Muslim people can speak about their experience. But Jews, whether we acculturated or retained our language, whether we were called uh, infiltrators or outsiders, whether we were seen as tribal or cosmopolitan, the globalists, no matter what we did, capitalists or Marxists, we were considered by the irrational hatred of anti-Semitism always other. There's nothing to do with that except combat it, combating anti-Semitism, because you can't change your behaviors, you can't change who you are in the eyes of someone who is determined irrationally to hate you. That's Amalek. But in so many other cases, and this will require bravery, careful thinking, vigilance, thoughtfulness. In so many other cases, fear, while, while not justified, can be rationalized. And if it can be rationalized, it can pass. We can think through. 
Rabbi Sachs makes the radical suggestion that Egypt is a case of rational fear. Amalek is a, ca is a case of irrational hatred. Yes, Risa, as Dr. King said, hate is too much a burden to bear. Yes, how crucial it is to think about different kinds of negative energy and to deal with each in its own appropriate way, learning from this Parsha that there are kinds of hatred that are irrational and must be fought. And learning from Rabbi Sachs that that's not every case, that even when pain has been caused to us, even when someone has been irrational in their hatred, if they have been rational to themselves about it, there is a way for us to change that behavior. Maybe it takes time, endurance certainly, but also wisdom. May we never forget what we must remember. When it comes to legacies like Queen Elizabeth, may we remember and learn from the best parts of that. When it comes to trauma and tragedy like September 11th, may we never forget. When it comes to the pain that we carry as Jews, as Americans, many of us, as global citizens in the best of implications, may we differentiate between the things we need to face and make friends wherever we can. That is the gift of Rabbi Sachs's beautiful, radical observation. Egypt shouldn't be despised. Let's think about that this Shabbat. Let's sing our way into a good Shabbos, everybody. Here we go.